get started. Thank you. Members will take their seats. And if all visitors will retire behind the rail, I would appreciate it. Thank you. To give our invocation this morning, the chair recognizes Rabbi Ari Lev Berneri. I get it? All right. Of Cole Shadek. He's here today as a guest of Councilwoman Gim. I would ask all members and guests to please rise. Last night and today, Jews around the world, including right here throughout the city of Philadelphia, celebrate the holiday of Purim. And we read from the story of Esther, which takes place in ancient Persia, a story about power, subversion, and survival. Twice the story instructs us, na'afohu, turn it upside down. The way things are, says the story of Esther, the injustice in the world is not inevitable, it is not necessary, and it is our responsibility to invert it. On Purim, as we walk the line between the absurd and the profound, we dress up in costumes and drink to excess to soften the judgments of ourselves and others. We celebrate those who leverage their power for good, those who organize the powerful into just action, and the importance of staying connected to pleasure and joy in a deeply broken society. Esther is the hero of the Purim story. The Jewish people are living in the sprawling Persian empire and are saved from Haman's evil scheme to annihilate them. One of my teacher explains that the most important verse in the entire Megillah, in the entire story of Esther, a verse that represents the pivotal turning point in the Purim story, comes near the end of chapter 4, when Mordechai sends a message to now Queen Esther, urging her to reveal her identity to King Ahasuerus and plead on behalf of the Jewish people. Remarkably, Mordechai's message to Esther hinges on two simple words, two words that promise nothing and change everything. Mi yodea, Mordechai says. Who knows? Who knows? Perhaps it was for such a time as this that you ascended to power. These are the words that set Esther in motion, that inspire her to take action. In spite of her own resistance, in spite of her fears about her own fate, in spite of her doubts about her own position and power in the king's court, who knows? In this remarkable exchange between Mordechai and Esther, something amazing happens. Who knows becomes not an excuse, but an invitation. Consider the possibility, says Mordechai, that you are here for a purpose. Consider the possibility that there is something bigger and more important than your fear. Consider the possibility that you have more power than you imagine. Consider the possibility that it is up to us to act out of love and responsibility for each other to make sure that every community, that every resident of the city of Philadelphia has access to the basic building blocks of a dignified life access to equitable funding for our schools, standing access to a world free from the expansion of fossil fuels, access to affordable housing, and an end to the tax abatement. Who knows if it wasn't for just a time as this that you are sitting on city council. This is the legacy of Mordechai and Esther, and they bequeath it to us, a legacy of humility and hope, of radical uncertainty, and radical responsibility. What are our obligations in this topsy-turvy world?
to take care of each other, to expand our circle of concern, to affirm the possibility of sweetness and generosity in the face of uncertainty, love, and fear. Who knows? Consider the possibility that this is why we are here, that in the face of a world of violence and uncertainty, we are commanded to be responsible for each other, to feed each other, to care for those in need, to increase peace and love and justice in our world. As Jews, we know what it feels like to be hunted and haunted by those who believe we are less than fully human. All of us, as people of faith and conscience, know that we live in an interconnected world and that injustice and violence anywhere tears at the fabric of God's creation. So may you who serve our city stay awake to the call to celebrate life and beauty, to uplift human dignity, and to use your power to turn things around. And let us say, Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi, for those inspiring words. Council will be at ease. Thank you very much. And again, Rabbi, thank you for those inspiring words. We really appreciate it. Our next order of business is the approval of the journal of the meeting of Thursday, March 14, 2019. And the chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, March 14, 2019 be approved. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly seconded that the journal of the meeting of Thursday, March 14, 2019 stand approved. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, and the journal is approved. And our next order of business is request for leave of absence. And the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the majority, there are no requests of leave of absence today. Chair, thanks the gentleman. Chair now recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of the Republicans, there are no requests for leave of absence. Chair, thanks the gentleman. At this time, I would like to dispense with the regular order of business, and I would like to welcome everyone who has come down to witness our government in action today. We genuinely appreciate you being here. We hope your stay here today is a knowledgeable one, but more importantly, a pleasurable one, so much so that you come back again. So again, thank you for being here. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilman Dom, who will present a resolution honoring Vernon Odom. Would Mr. Odom and those accompanying him please join the councilman at the podium? And the big news tonight is Vernon Odom. Um, hold on. Folks, we have a little quiet, please. All right. 
Thank you. Go ahead, Councilor. Good morning, everyone. And uh, morning. I came to Philadelphia in 1976, right after school. And uh, the first news show I watched was Action News. And back in the late 70s, going back in time, many of you don't remember that, it was Jim Gardner, it was Jim O'Brien, may he rest in peace, Mark Howard, and Vernon Odom. And today we're honoring Vernon Odom as he retires from his position as an action news reporter for 6ABC after 42 years. Whereas Mr. Odom has been covering the Philadelphia News for over four decades and his reign on action news has spanned the term of seven mayors and... Whereas arriving in Philadelphia in 1976, Mr. Odom has become a Philadelphia institution through to the point of interview through his to-the-point interview style, his empathetic, fair approach to reporting, and... Whereas, educated at Morehouse College for his undergraduate degree and Columbia University for his postgraduate degree in broadcast journalism, Mr. Odom has spent the past 50 years as a reporter, and... Whereas, born in Atlanta, Georgia, and raised in Akron, Ohio, journalism runs in Mr. Odom's family. Vern's father, great-grandfather, launched the second African-American-run newspaper in the nation. And whereas his sister, Maida Odom, was a longtime reporter for the Philadelphia Inquirer and now teaches journalism at Temple University, Mr. Odom's wife, Wanda Motley Odom, with whom he has two children, is also a former Inquirer reporter. And Whereas Mr. Odom got his start as a reporter in Georgia, covering stories in the deep st and still partially segregated South, the first news story that accelerated him to national attention was his interview with Coretta Scott King after Martin Luther King's assassination. It was an event that shook the nation, and Mr. Odom had the first and only interview for days, and? Whereas Mr. Odom covered momentous events, both in Philadelphia and around the world. In Philadelphia, he covered many big stories, such as the accident at Three Mile Island, the move disaster, and Wilson Good's election as the city's mayor and the first African-American politician to hold that position. Whereas Mr. Odom has reported from hotspots like post-Cold War Russia and Somalia where he covered the humanitarian crisis, he covered the release of Nelson Mandela and South Africa's first free elections of his career as a reporter, Mr. Odom says, quote, it's been a great ride and a ringside seat to the world, end quote. And whereas uh, with his unshakable understanding of politics, Mr. Odom has excelled in his career, his ability to ask direct, well-informed questions causes some politicians to squirm, but helps Mr. Odom get to the heart of the matter and tell the story. And Whereas Mr. Odom's peers describe him as a mentor for young reporters and his interviewees, say that he is so likable that even when he is reporting on a story that is unfavorable for them, they can't help but answer his questions. And? Whereas, but before I enter that, I have a point of personal privilege and that I must bring out to this body. I've known Vernon Odom longer than anyone else in this room, for me personally. He covered a story when I was in arboriculture class at going to the tree climbing class of Penn State University in Fairmount Park. That morning, I had a full head of hair, a heck of a lot thinner, and I was 70 feet up in a sycamore looking at the Philadelphia Zoo. And who is there alongside with me in a tree covering this for Channel 6 ABC is reporter Vernon Odom. I'll never forget the day. It meant a lot to me. I know you've done thousands of stories, but it was pretty neat. <laughs> Whereas, recently awarded Person of the Year by Broadcast Pioneers of Philadelphia, Mr. Odom represents the best of the best. Throughout Mr. Odom's career, the realm of newscasting has changed tremendously, but Mr. Odom has remained a steady 
deep voice presence that viewers can trust and put the story first. And whereas, although Mr. Odom has retired, he has no plans of slowing down. Future plans include a potential book reflecting on his 50 years as a reporter and voiceover work that he's previously had to turn down. Mr. Odom loves the news and therefore will always be ready to provide commentary, analysis, or give lectures on the news. And... Well, I don't have a Sycamore story, or a tree story, <laughs> but I do know that Vernon Odom has earned the admiration of our great city through his commitment to steadfast and honest reporting. Now, therefore, be it. Let me say that I'm honored. I'm sorry I didn't think of it myself. And that I remember when Vernon first came, Lucian and I were here together. And uh, he came from the beginning doing a fabulous job of being great to us and our city. And we're grateful to be part of this resolution. Resolved that the council of the city of Philadelphia hereby recognizes and honors Vernon Odom for service to the Philadelphia community. And the chair recognizes Mr. Odom for remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, council members, for those uh, kind words and remembrances. Uh, to Mr. Tallenberger, sometimes I wound up up a tree myself. That's why I worried. That's why I didn't react that day. But I thank the council members uh, for, and Council President Clark, I don't mean not to recognize you, sir. I'm reminded of one of your predecessors today. I love this room. I spent many hours in this room covering all the intrigue and all the all all of the the fire and brimstone and uh, hot air and sometimes. But it's been a magnificent experience keeping my eye on things and staying long after to find out what really happened there and what really took place there and trying to get the, the background on the story. But it's always been a wonderful place of people who were champions of uh, free speech. 98% of the time over the years, and this goes back a long time ago, folks in this room, the duly elected officials, have always been, been trying to do the right thing and be progressive out of love for that town. There have been some fallbacks and some, and some missteps and things like that, but always this has been a positive place for free speech and people expressing their, attention, or their feelings and uh, people loving this great city. Uh, I'm reminded uh, today, I see the vote was 17 to nothing. Joe Coleman, uh, one of your venerable predecessors, Mr. Clark, used to always say, Vernon, I can't do a damn thing unless I can get nine votes in there. That's, I gotta have them. And I uh, thank you, Darrell. I know you had to push through to get all 17. That's right. You uh, uh, for me this time. Uh, uh, I, when, when Alan Dobbs' office first called me, I said, well, I may be able to squeak through there at 10, 10, 8 or something like, 10, 7 or something like that. But I'm very honored. I'm very thrilled to be here. This city, as many people don't know, is not my hometown. I'm not from Philadelphia originally, but I came here 43 years ago. And um, especially sentimental you know, with Mrs. Blackwell here today because uh, she and uh, the late Lou Blackwell were very kind to me and told me a lot about what was going on in town and kept me posted. And uh, there's so many people I'd like to thank today, but I'm deeply honored. And um, the city has been very good to me, as the great Latin ball player would say. It's, provided me with a wonderful wife and a wonderful family, two children who were all born and raised in Philly, PA. And when I came here, I was nervous. I was coming from Atlanta, which was a much smaller southern town then, and I didn't know what was going to happen. I was very, very, um, very, very uh, shy and bashful and sort of a country guy who didn't know what was going to happen in this big city. And um, it's been a wonderful experience. And I'm not dying, folks. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get up and run around the room here. I'm in perfectly good health. And, uh, and uh, I thank this city and its wonderful people who've always been very kind and accepting of me. And uh, it's been a magnificent choice I made. I could have gone back to my hometown area of Cleveland, Ohio at that time 
but Philly was the right place for me. And I never figured out why, but the car headed up 95 and it got here before 95 was completed. And I'm, I want to thank everybody for this wonderful city. And uh, some of the people I've known here were, the councilwoman here just told me she was four years old when she refers, remembers me on television. Well, that's fantastic because I've watched most of the political careers here develop. Uh, councilwoman Blondell Reynolds Brown, a longtime friend of mine. And um, I'm very thrilled and happy, and I, I thank you for this award. It means a heck of a lot. And it means, it's overwhelming, and I won't, I won't bore you, but thank you for having me. And uh, I deeply appreciate it. Hey, how you? thank you so much to all the council members for uh, recognizing my hard work and my dedicated work to this wonderful city. I have, uh, as I've said, I've enjoyed it. And, Denise James, my, old, my colleague out there, is waving to me. So that means it's time, with my wife not here, that means it's time for me to wrap it up and get off. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate it so much. You have no idea. Thank you. Council Biddies. ABC, where I've been working for so long, doing what I did, with whom I did. Tom Davis, the news director and vice president of Channel 6, and Rob Royal, who is one of the executive producers there. Raise your hands, guys, and say hello so the crowd can see you. But I'd like to thank them for coming down today and taking time out of their busy schedule to be here to stand with me today. And I'm sorry I didn't mention them in my earlier remarks, but Council President, I actually got you to turn the mic back on. I've seen you turn it off a few times. <laughs> <laughs> that, only, that only for you, Bernie. That must be real power here. Only, only so, for you. Uh, <laughs> and already I'm hearing about all the intrigue going on with the elections coming up and things like that, just like I used to do in the old days when I was covering City Council. Nothing's changed. The more things change, the more they stayed the same. But it's been okay. fascinating. Thank you so right. much. Thank you.
Thank you, and again, congratulations for, for your service to our Cindy. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilwoman Blackwell, who presented a resolution proclaiming March 2019 as Social Work Month. Would Liz Hirsch and those accompanying her please join the Councilwoman at the podium? And joining the Councilwoman, we have Councilman O. Councilwoman Blano Reynolds Brown, Councilwoman Parker, Councilman Heenan. Mr. President, we really should be calling this Liz Hirsch and Homeless Week, but we are honored to have our uh, wonderful friends and committed people to be here today to receive this resolution. Resolution hereby proclaiming March 19th as Social Work Month and encouraging all Philadelphians to support the social work profession. Whereas the primary mission of social work is to enhance human well-being and help meet the, need, the basic needs of all people, especially the most vulnerable. And whereas every day social workers address the emotional, psychological, economic, and or physical needs of millions of people. And whereas social workers help people function better in their environments, improve their relationship with others, and solve personal and family problems through a wide range of services. And Whereas social workers are employed in many different organizations and industries, including private and public agencies, hospices and hospitals, schools and universities, businesses and foundations, military branches and veteran centers, and others. And whereas, <laughs> whereas the city of Philadelphia depends on social workers to accomplish many of their functions in serving its citizens. The Office of Homeless Services especially relies on social workers to fulfill their important missions of making homelessness rare, brief, and non-reoccurring in the city of Philadelphia. Just last year, the Office of Homeless Services assisted 16,549 persons and... Whereas social workers serve a key role in our society, it takes a special person to dedicate their lives to helping the most vulnerable among us. Social workers must find compassion daily in order to assist people who are often facing extremely difficult life circumstances. We are grateful for the work social workers do for our city and we are in awe of their dedication to serving others. Now, therefore be it resolved that the Council of the City of Philadelphia hereby proclaims March 2019 as Social Worker Month and encourages all Philadelphians to support the social service work program. Further be it resolved that in a gross copy of this resolution that is being presented today, that the Office of Homeless Services as a sincere expression of the City Council of the City of Philadelphia's gratitude, admiration, and recognition. Congratulations. And the chair recognizes Ms. Hurst for remarks. Thank you, Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank, Thank you. you so much for all your support. Thank you to all of you. Uh, this was not my idea. This was Eric Williams doing. He took the leadership and he said, we have to get recognized for the hard work that the social workers at the Office of Homeless Services and throughout the city do. Every day, while we're warm and safe and well-fed, there are thousands of people 
within this city who don't have enough to eat and who don't have a place to go home to. We shelter them, we help them find a way forward towards work or some other kind of dignified way to make a living and most importantly to have a place to live so that they can have a better life for themselves. And this is the work that social workers do day in and day out. So I take my hat off mm -hmm. to all the social workers at the Office of Homeless Services, the unsung heroes and heroines who help this city be a better place, who extend a helping hand day in and day out to those who need, who maintain hope, who are a guiding light, and who live out that resolve that we can have a better life for everybody here in Philadelphia. Thank you so much. Thank you and congratulations. Council will be at ease. Congratulations. At this time, the chair recognizes Councilman Kenyatta Johnson. Thank you, Council President. Um, Council President, um, today uh, we are joined by um, the lovely ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Incorporated. We would like to ask them to stand, please. The, the, the purpose of them being here today is celebrating um, Zeta, Day, Zeta Day here in City Council, but also later on, 
um, during our council session, I will be naming the 1900 block of Federal Street um, after their um, founder of their sorority, Arizona C. Stemmons Way. So we want to acknowledge them, and um, this effort was spearheaded by um, one Catherine C. Gilmore Richardson, the protege of our colleague, Councilwoman Lotto Swindles Brown. And so I want to defer the rest of my comments um, to the gentle Councilwoman at large. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Lotto Reynolds Brown. Well, thank you, Councilman Kenyatta Johnson. Uh, Councilwoman Sherelle Parker and I are, belong to the sister organization of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated Philadelphia Alumni Chapter, and it is always our pleasure to salute the finer women of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated uh, on the eve of their centennial. The Zetas, too, have a mission of educating uh, those they care about in the communities where they live, and we are thankful for the work that you do. We are thank you for the legacy that you bring. And I, too, salute Catherine Gilmore Richardson, a proud Zeta Phi Beta sorority member. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thanks, Councilor. Thank you very much, and thank you all so much for being here, and thank you for the great work you do. Appreciate it. Chair now recognizes Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'd like to welcome some future leaders and current youth uh, to our chambers who are down here to explore uh, both government, private sector, and their future uh, here with uh, Warren Davis of GRIP TV. They represent the Youth Drug Abuse Awareness Project, uh, and they are a citywide group coming from various districts around the city. I'd like them to stand and be recognized by council. Thank you, Councilman, and thank you. Great job. Thank you for being here today. Uh, that concludes our presentations. And our Councilman Heenan or Johnson? Who's right? Council, Councilman Heenan was next. All right, whatever. I'll you, you guys flip a coin. Thank you, Council President. Um, thank you for your patience as well. Also, after today's council session, after the official um, acknowledgement of renaming the 1900 block of Federal Street after um, Arizona Stimmons, there will also be a lunch inside the caucus room sponsored by the lovely ladies of Zeta Phi Beta Incorporated. Just wanted to make that announcement. Thank you, Council thank, President. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we had a lot of acknowledgments here, which is, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, this one's a little, uh, a, a little unprecedented, but uh, on the first full day of spring, which is uh, a lovely day, even though it's raining outside, uh, the acknowledgement I want to uh, make is to my mother, right, who is celebrating a milestone birthday today on the lovely first day of spring. It goes with my lovely mother, uh, who has done a fantastic job you know, with you know, her family, my family, her grandkids, and the community at large. So uh, life is always greener and better with my mother in it, and it is her birthday today. And I want to wish her, who watches every single session, who texts me during council, tells me, or am I awake, am I sleeping, am I watch your facial expressions, and what is that a mean, or what does that, so when I get home and we, we talk business, you know, I always get a phone call, my mother uh, tell me her opinion, and her opinion means a lot to me, and uh, I want to thank her so much uh, for being my mother, and happy birthday, Mom. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Chair, recognize Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I want to thank uh, Council Member Johnson as well as uh, Council Members um, Brown and Parker for welcoming the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta to City Hall today. As a member of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, I would be remiss in not celebrating another fine institution of our Divine Nine. Thank you for your leadership and your service to our community and our city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you. Our next order of business is communications, and the chair requested the Sergeant of Arms delivers the messages from the mayor to the chief clerk.
And Mr. Decker, if you can please read those messages. To the President and members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, I am pleased to advise you that on March 19, 2019, I signed the remaining bills which were passed by Council at its session on March 7, 2019. And that on March 19, 2019, I signed the following bill, which was passed by Council at its session on March 14, 2019, Bill number 190102. And that on March 20, 2019, I signed the following bill, which was passed by Council at its session on March 14, 2019, Bill number 180818. And I am submitting herewith for the consideration of your honorable body a resolution reappointing Michael Woodward to the Board of Directors of the City Avenue Special Services District of Philadelphia and Lower Marion and an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to convey to the Philadelphia Authority for Industrial Development properties located at 4910 Botanic Avenue, 5014 Grays Avenue, 5027 Grays Avenue, and 2639 South 58th Street, and further authorizing paid to reconvey a portion of the property at 4910 Botanic Avenue to the City of Philadelphia, all under and subject to the terms and conditions of the Philadelphia Industrial and Commercial Development Agreement among the City, paid, and the Philadelphia Industrial Development Corporation all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Do you have any additional communications? I have none, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Our next order of business is the introduction of bills and resolutions. And the chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. This morning I offer two resolutions. Thank you, Councilwoman. A privilege resolution honoring Philadelphia's philanthropic women leaders in recognition of Women's History Month. Today's calendar. And a non privilege resolution urging the Pennsylvania General Assembly to support Restore Pennsylvania, Governor Tom Wolf's $4.5 billion infrastructure improvement plan. Also today's calendar, Chair recognized Councilwoman Blackwell. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. On your behalf, I offer one bill and three resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the city to enter into an agreement with the City of Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the PRA to act as the city's agent for the marketing, competitive bidding, sale, and development as applicable of certain city-owned properties. For the committee. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration of these conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city owned lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 32nd Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Next week's calendar. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to execute and deliver to the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority without consideration of deeds conveying conditional fee simple title to certain city owned lots of pieces of ground with the buildings and improvements thereon situated in the 32nd Ward of the City of Philadelphia. Next week's calendar. And a non-privileged resolution authorizing the Philadelphia Land Bank to dispose of 2937 North 8th Street, located in the 5th Councilmanic District. Also next week's calendar, the Chair recognizes Councilman Heenan. Thank you, Council President. Today, I am introducing two bills and offer one privileged resolution. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the city to acquire a fee simple title or a lesser interest in real estate by purchase, dedication, donation, condemnation, agreement in lieu of condemnation or otherwise to parcels of land along the Delaware River and in the bed of the former Kensington and Taconi Railroad. For the committee. And an ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property to convey to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania all or a portion of a parcel or parcels of land in and about the area bounded by Taconi Street, Levick Street, Milner Street, and Barnett Street. For the committee. And a privilege resolution congratulating and honoring the Crispin cheerleading team on the occasion of their successful season, culminating in a win at the 2019 National Cheerleading Competition. Today's calendar, Chair recognizes Councilman Jones. Mr. President, today I offer one bill, two privileged and one non-privileged resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance amending Section 9205 of the Philadelphia Code entitled Sidewalk Sales by prohibiting vending on City Avenue between Haverford Avenue and 77th Street. For the committee. And a privileged resolution recognizing and honoring Phil Martelli for his many years of diligent service and success both on and off the basketball court during his tenure as head coach of the St. Joseph's University Hawks men's basketball team. Um, that will be on today's calendar. 
And a privilege resolution congratulating and honoring Frederick L. Voigt for 50 years of dedicated service to the residents of Philadelphia on the occasion of his retirement from the office of the Philadelphia City Commissioners. Today's calendar. And a non-privilege resolution reappointing Michael Woodward to the Board of Directors of the City Avenue Special Services District of Philadelphia and Lower Marion. And that will be referred to committee. Chair recognizes is Councilman Johnson. Council President, I have no bills or resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes is Councilwoman Keona Sanchez. Thank you, Councilman President. I have one privilege resolution. Thank you, Councilwoman. A privilege resolution recognizing March 25th through March 29th, 2019 as Immigrant Business Week in the city of, city of Philadelphia. Today's calendar, Chair recognizes Councilman Green. Thank you, Council President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman Dow. Thank you, Council President. No bills or resolutions today. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Gim. Good morning, Council President. Morning. I have one privilege resolution sponsored by uh, Council Members Squilla, Parker, Greenlee, Dom, and Reynolds Brown. Thank you, Councilwoman. A privilege resolution declaring March 31, 2019 as Trans Day of Visibility in the City of Philadelphia. Today's calendar. Chair recognizes Councilman Taubenberger. Good morning, Council President. I have no bills or resolutions this morning. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilman O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no bills or resolutions. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll for two bills. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance authorizing Fox telev television stations to install, own, and maintain planters at 330 Market Street. For the committee. And an ordinance establishing parking regulations in the vicinity of South 13th Street and Dickinson Street, Federal Street and South 7th Street, Federal Street and South 10th Street, Annan Street and South 9th Street, Eisenminger Street and Morris Street, Cross Street and Marshall Street, South 13th Street and Reed Street. Refer to committee. Chair recognize Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. No bills or resolutions this week. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you, Council President. I offer one bill co sponsored by Council Members uh, Blackwell, Bass, and Quinona Sanchez. And may I be heard after the title is read? Sure. Thank Certainly. you. Certainly. Thank you, Councilman. An ordinance authorizing transfers and appropriations for fiscal year 2019 within the general fund from the Office of Innovation and Technology, the Department of Public Health, and the Civil Service Commission to the Director of Finance, Community College of Philadelphia. Chair recognizes Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. Um, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania passed Act 484, known as the Community College Act of 1963. It mandated equal funding from three sources, the state one-third, the city one-third, and students one-third. Although there have been changes to Act 484, the state law continues to call for at least one-third of the funding for community colleges to come from each community college's local sponsor, in that case, the city of Philadelphia. Because the city has not been meeting its mandatory minimum appropriations to Community College of Philadelphia for many years, students have been burdened with higher tuition costs. For this fiscal year's $134.7 million operating budgets, students provide 55% of the revenue while the state provides 24% and the city provides only 19%. That is a shortfall of $19,250,000. The mayor's proposed municipal budget for fiscal year 2020, unveiled two weeks ago, falls short by $18 million of the state mandated one third of community college proposed operating budget. We held a hearing on March 12th, that is uh, the uh, Committee on Education, chaired by Councilman Blackwell and uh, the a committee chaired by myself to examine why the city of Philadelphia has not been providing the minimum revenues required by the state to fund Community College of Philadelphia so that the city can begin the process of developing a plan to meet its financial obligation. Community College of Philadelphia is a vital asset to the city with approximately 27,729 students. It is the city's responsibility to ensure that it has the resources to serve its students. Its role is crucial to strengthening the regional workforce 
In an increasingly technological and global world, furthermore, it is an invaluable resource in our community in addressing some of the most pressing issues, such as violence, homelessness, and addiction. The last time the city provided 33% was 1983. Over the past 21 year, years, if you total the amount of shortfall in state mandated funding, that would equal 326,000, I mean, I'm sorry, 326 million, 396,291 dollars. I heard a poll today on uh, the news, and it revealed that today, more than ever in our history, Americans do not feel they have a real opportunity to improve their lives. High tuition costs of university colleges, other things account for that, but Community College of Philadelphia and community colleges across America provide real quality opportunities for education at an affordable price. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. That bill will be referred to committee. And that concludes our introduction of bills and resolutions. And our next order of business is reports from committee. And the chair recognizes Councilman Squilla for a report from the Committee of Streets and Services. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Streets and Services reports 11 bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Decker, please read the report. To the President, the members of the Council of the City of Philadelphia, the Committee on Streets and Services, to which is referred Bill Number 180944, entitled an ordinance establishing a parking regulation on Taney Street, West Side, Brown Street to Aspen Street, and Bill Number 180945, entitled an ordinance establishing a parking regulation on Marlborough Street, West Side, Wildy Street to Richmond Street, and Bill Number 180967, entitled an ordinance establishing parking regulations in the vicinity of Brown Street and Broad Street, Russell Street and Germantown Avenue. Rush Street and Park Avenue, and Bill Number 181061, entitled an ordinance amending Section 9205 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Sidewalk Sales, by prohibiting vending on both sides of 56th Street between Haverford Avenue and Vine Street, 57th Street between Haverford Avenue and Vine Street, and Vine Street between 56th Street and 57th Street. And Bill Number 181100, entitled an ordinance establishing a parking regulation on Park Avenue, both sides, Dolphin Street to Susquehanna Avenue. And Bill Number 181102, entitled an ordinance establishing a no motorhome parking regulation on the 5300 block of Wood Woodbine Avenue, both sides. And Bill Number 190061, entitled an ordinance authorizing Timothy Lydiak doing business as the Thirsty Soul to install, own, and maintain an open-air sidewalk cafe at 1551 West Pass Yonk Avenue. And Bill Number 190081 entitled an ordinance establishing a one-way regulation on Cecil B. Moore Avenue from Front Street to 6th Street westbound. And Bill Number 190082 entitled an ordinance establishing a one-way regulation on Montgomery, Montgomery Avenue from 2nd Street to Front Street eastbound. And Bill Number 190084 entitled an ordinance establishing parking regulations in the vicinity of Marvine Street and Champlow Street, North 12th Street and Chew Avenue, Camac Street and Chew Avenue, North 12th Street and Champlow Street, North 9th Street and Ruscombe Street, North Marvine Street and Champlow Avenue. And Bill Number 190161 entitled an ordinance authorizing Michael Myers doing business as Fill It Up Again to install, own, and maintain an open air sidewalk cafe at 436 East Girard Avenue. Respectful of reports that has considered the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Decker. The chair again recognizes Councilman Squilla. Thank you, Mr. President. And I move that the rules of council be suspended to submit the first reading this day of the 11 bills that were just read into the record by the clerk. Thank you. It has been moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended so as to remit first reading this day of the 11 bills. Just read into the record by the clerk. All those in favor say aye. aye. The, those opposed, aye. aye have it. And these bills will be placed on our first winning calendar today. Chair again recognizes Councilwoman Bass for a report from the Committee on Health and Human Services. Thank you, Mr. President. The Committee on Public Health and Human Services reports three bills with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. 
Mr. Decker, please read the report. The Committee on Public Health and Human Services, to which is deferred Bill Number 180936, entitled An Ordinance Amending Title VI of the Philadelphia Code and Titled Health Code Relating to Lead Paint Hazards and Other Violations, to provide for appeal periods and for penalties, to provide for inspections and fees, to revise definitions and to promote lead safety. And Bill Number 180937, entitled An Ordinance Amending Chapter 6200 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Preventative Medicine, to establish requirements for the testing of blood lead levels in children. And Bill Number 190938, entitled An Ordinance Amending Title 16 of the Philadelphia Code, entitled Public Property, by adding a new section requiring that certain renovation projects involving city-owned or occupied buildings, or the use of city capital dollars, be certified as lead-free or lead-safe prior to the completion of the renovation project. <coughs> Respectfully reports it as considered and amended the same and returns the attached bills to council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Decker. The chair again recognizes Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 180936, 180937, and 180938. Second. Thank you. It has been moved and properly second that the rules of council be suspended so as to permit first reading this day of bills number 180-936, 180-937, 180-938. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And these bills will be placed on our first reading calendar today. That concludes our reports from committee and our next order of business is the consideration of the calendar. I note that the bills just read, reported from committee with suspension of the rules have been deemed to have had their first reading. Uh, they will be on our second reading and final passes calendar at our next session of council. As no additional bills on the first reading calendar, the chair recognizes Councilman Heenan for the purpose of calling in bills and resolutions that are on the final passes calendar today. Thank you, Mr. President. The following resolutions and bills are being called up from the second reading and final passage calendars today. They are bill numbers 190188, 190189, 190192, 190194. 190198, 190199, 180864, 190062. All other bills and resolutions are being held. Sorry. Um, thank you. Uh, before considering these bills and resolutions that are on our final passes calendar today, uh, we will have our public comment session. Um, the public comment session must be on a bill or resolution that is on the final passes calendar today. Um, if you have not already testified, you may, test, you may already sign up at the table to my left for a bill of resolution that's on passage today. Um, when your name is called, you will go to the middle of the council chambers. There's a podium. Uh, on that podium, there's a device. The device has a light, and when that light turns Green, it will be your time to speak. When the lights turn yellow, you will have 30 seconds to conclude your remarks. When the lights turn red, we'd ask that you please adhere to our guidelines and respectfully conclude your remarks. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Mr. Decker, please call the first name on the list. Emily Davis. Commenting on 181063. Morning. Hi, my name is Emily Davis, and I ask you to please vote down Bill 181063, um, which would allow the city to enter a contract for a liquefied natural gas plant. At a time when the city is trying to lower its carbon footprint, this is not a time to permit the building of new facilities that support a system based on hydrocarbons. We have heard about the costly results of extreme weather, for example, Nebraska and Mozambique happening this week um, that have plagued the world in recent years. 97% of scientists believe climate change is caused by humans, and they know what humans are doing to cause that climate change. One of these activities is burning car hydrocarbons. Scientists also know that one of the effects of climate change is extreme weather. These disasters are very costly, our government says that in 2018, there were 14 weather and climate disaster events that exceeded a cost of $1 billion each across the United States. So Philadelphia is right in wanting to lower its carbon footprint. The financial advantage of this LNG plant is questionable. Uh, the annual budget of the city of Philadelphia is over $4 billion. The income from this facility is projected to be less than 0.1% of that. Um, there are also questions about the private partner. 
I agree PGW needs help, but this is not it. As we transition away from the use of natural gas in our homes, we will need the support of PGW. But while one part of PGW maintains the old system and shrinks in size, a new part supporting sustainable energy sources and energy efficiency could be expanding. Please do not support this bill or any bill that supports new infrastructure for fossil fuels. The uh, costs outweigh the benefits. Don't be complicit in our own destruction. Thank you for your testimony. Tomia Scipio Smith. <clears throat> Commenting on 190198. Good afternoon. Good morning. My name is Tamia Scipio Smith. I'm the Education Policy Director at PCCY. Thank you for the opportunity to testify in support of the resolution today. Pennsylvania's charter school law gives Charter Appeals Board, or the CAB, tremendous power. It is the only body that hears charter school cases if a charter school appeals Philadelphia School Board's decision to deny, revoke, or renew a charter school application. It can override the local school board's decision and allow charter schools to open or continue to operate unless and until the district challenges the CAB decision in Commonwealth Court. Currently, five of the members of the CAB are serving expired terms. All were appointed by the former Governor Tom Corbett. One seat is vacant. PCCY is calling for a moratorium on CAB proceedings until all board members are serving unexpired terms and the vacancy is filled. To be clear, the petition was not launched as an attack on the governor. While we call on Governor Wolf to appoint new members, the Senate has at least as much at stake to fill the seats with board members serving unexpired terms and filling the vacancy. While the governor appoints, the Senate must also approve any new appointees. One of the reasons we called attention to the current situation was to bring all parties to the table to resolve this issue. For Philadelphia and its students, this resolution matters. The Philadelphia School District just regained local control and has a new school board. It just exercised an option not to approve charters for three new schools. If the charter appeals the decision, the CAB hears the case. It removes the decision from the Philadelphia School District, a district that receives high marks on its authorizing from pro-charter organizations that promote high-level quality authorizing and places the decision right back in the hands of the state. Considering the gravity of their reviews and the impact their decision have on Philadelphia's public school students, placing a moratorium on the CAB proceedings until all board members are serving unexpired terms and the seat is filled, the open seat is filled, this is the correct decision and course of action. Thank you. David Loeb. Commenting on 190194. Hello, uh, members of council, Council President Clark. Uh, I'm here to comment on Bill 190194 to authorize a study uh, to assess the impact of certain taxes. Uh, and now, of course, this is about the soda tax. Uh, and look, we need to keep this tax in place. Uh, and so I want to thank my council person, uh, Councilman Squilla, for not co sponsoring the bill to repeal or reduce the soda tax. Uh, Pre-K is just so important for the city, and you know we need to preserve the uh, the funding stream that that makes really pre-K possible. So uh, thank you again, Councilman Squilla, for not signing on to the effort to repeal the soda tax, and uh, I look forward to uh, watching you you know continue to fight for pre-K and for Philly's children. Thank you. Thanks for your testimony, Raynell Brown Staley. Commenting on 190198. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. 
My name is Raynell Brown Staley, and I serve as Policy Director at the Education Law Center, an organization dedicated to ensuring that all of Pennsylvania's children have access to quality public education. Three weeks ago today, ELC released a new report on equity in Philadelphia's charter schools titled Safeguarding Educational Equity, Protecting Philadelphia's Students' Civil Rights Through Charter Oversight. And you have copies of that report on your desks. In it, we identified a range of unaddressed equity issues in charter schools in areas such as enrollment, practices, special education, and education of English learners. We highlighted the role of Philadelphia's Board of Education in guarding against discriminatory practices in, in the city's charter schools. But we also noted the need for stronger charter oversight and accountability at all levels to protect student civil rights. Today, I offer testimony on an area where change is sorely overdue, the State Charter Appeal Board. The CAB is a uniquely powerful body in the realm of charter oversight. Local school boards have the power to deny a charter application or not renew or, or revoke an existing charter. The CAB has exclusive authority to affirm or overturn the, these local school boards' decisions. The CAB's decisions aren't the acts of judges trained to strictly interpret the law and apply precedent. The six members of the CAB are governor-appointed, Senate-confirmed community members, granted tremendous power over their term. By law, CAB members should be a parent of a school-aged child, a school board member, a certified teacher, a faculty member of a higher education institution, a member of the business community, and a member of the State Board of Education. Their qualifications are defined and their terms are limited out of recognition that the board should reflect the views of the community and change in composition over time. Our report and a wealth of national research indicate that current thinking about charter school oversight needs to evolve. We need to evaluate how well a charter school is doing, not just by looking at academic and financial performance, but at the students they're serving as well. A school can position itself to perform well on academic measures by enrolling students who already have some measure of, academic, of educational privilege when they enter their doors. Likewise, a school can position itself to perform well on financial measures by enrolling students who require fewer resources and services to achieve academic success. If we focus academic and perform on academic and financial performance to the exclusion of equity, we incentivize charters to underserve the students with the greatest educational needs, a phenomenon that's happening right now in Philadelphia. The members of the CAB need to be revisited by law and to reflect our current understanding of charter oversight. We support the work of council to bring needed attention to this issue and ensure that the CAB members are duly appointed, duly confirmed, and serving unexpired terms. Given the tremendous power the CAB has to impact the well-being of our students in our district, it's important that Philadelphia, the site of more than half of the, the state's brick and mortar charters, use, it, it, use its influence to urge Char Harrisburg to act. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Lisa Haver. Commenting on 190198. Good morning, Good Council afternoon. President. Good afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, Council President Clark, members of City Council, my name is Lisa Haver. I'm a retired Philadelphia teacher, co-founder of the Alliance for Philadelphia Public Schools. I'm speaking today on behalf of the members of APPS to urge Council to pass Resolution 190198, calling for a moratorium on all PA Charter Appeal Board proceedings until Governor Wolf can make appointments. I want to thank Council Members Gim, Blackwell, and Greenlee, whose records show consistent support for public education for co-sponsoring the resolution. Last year, we shook off the yoke of state control and restored local control to our public schools. Both Mayor Kenny and this Council reaffirmed their commitment to funding the city schools. The Mayor, Council, and the community will continue to fight for the best education for our school children. Council has taken steps to increase its own oversight of the district. The new Board of Education is working hard to manage our schools through more public engagement in community meetings and in new committees where the public can be heard and where true deliberation on issues is taking place. The Board made a definitive statement last month when it unanimously rejected three clearly inadequate applications for new charter schools. Those decisions should be final. The Board is responsible for representing the people of the city and how the district spends its money. That's why it makes no sense that even with our return to local control, an obscure board made up of state appointees should have the power to overrule the decisions of our local school board. The Charter Appeals Board meets in Harrisburg and is made up of individuals who are unknown to this community, 
do not live in this community, do not pay taxes in this community, and have no accountability in this community. The Charter Appeal Board is currently made up of appointees of former Governor Corbett, most of whose terms have expired. The power to decide which schools this district or any district creates or chooses not to cannot be made by political appointees with no connection to this district. When we lost 24 public schools in 2013, there was no legal appeal for the students or the parents of those schools. Agree or disagree, that decision was final. The Charter Appeal Board should be abolished. It is wrong for local officials to be overruled by an out-of-town group of unknown political appointees. And until it is, we're calling for a moratorium on all cab proceedings until the expired terms can be filled by Governor Wolf. Philadelphians have the right to determine what is best for our city and what is best for the stakeholders of the school district. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Valerie Valenz. Commenting on 190192. Good morning. To Council President Clark, the members of City Council, and all those assembled here, my name is Valerie G.C. Valines, President of Beta Delta Zeta Chapter, the Philadelphia Graduate Tr Chapter of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. I can't tell you how humbled I am to stand be before you representing a chapter that the principal founder of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated was a member of and chartered nearly 75 years ago. Imagine an African-American woman who founded an organization nearly 100 years ago, and the organization is still thriving, with over 125,000 college-educated women and with chapters that exist not only in the United States, but also around the globe. Imagine a woman who defied the typical stereotypes that existed with sorority and fraternity life in the early 1900s and founded an organization that was based on service, scholarship, sisterhood, and finer womanhood. This woman's name was Arizona Cleaver Stemmons. She was the first national president of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. She attended Howard University where, Zetas was, was, where Zeta was founded on January 16, 1920 and completed her graduate and postgraduate studies in the field of social work. And ironically, on today, you just proclaimed the month of March as uh, Social Workers Month. So thank you for that. She was responsible for chartering numerous undergraduate and graduate chapters throughout the United States, including Ada Chapter at Temple University here in Philadelphia, and Beta Delta Zeta Chapter, the chapter that I stand here representing today. She resided on the 1900 block of Federal Street in South Philadelphia for 52 years. Her address was 1915 Federal Street, and currently the house is owned by my chapter, and we affectionately call it the Founder's House. It is because of the contributions of Founder Emerita Simmons that I pr proudly stand before you in support of Resolution 190192 for the co-naming of the 1900 block of Federal Street to Arizona C. Stemmons Way. And on behalf of my chapter, I wish to thank Councilman Kenyatta Johnson, Councilwoman Blondell Reynolds-Brown, and the other members of council who co-sponsored this resolution. Additionally, I'd like to also thank our soror, Catherine Gilmore. My, my chapter greatly appreciates you and thanks you for your consideration. Thank you. Mr. Decker's looking for a cue. Mr. Decker, we have, I think we have four ladies that are gonna testify on this. Why don't you all just tee up so you can just all come up. We'll call the names. Uh, Mr. Decker, call the names of the Tajman Kelly. Jennifer Santiago. Sanaya Johnson. And Diane Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Decker. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, President and members of the Philadelphia City Council. My name is Taj McKelly. I am a member of Beta Delta Zeta Chapter of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, where I serve as the first vice president. 
It is an honor to stand before you today and encourage that this resolution comes to life. As a humble member of this organization, I recognize what my founder, Arizona, C. Arizona Stimmons, at a young age on the campus of Howard University did when her and four other members decided to join, the, to originate this sorority. They dedicated their life to principles of scholarship, service, sisterly love, and final womanhood. She took those principles and came here to the city of Philadelphia and worked for the Department of Human Service. As you, she has dedicated her life to serving the city, just as you have. By passing this resolution, it is a testament to her legacy and the legacy of the sorority. And I highly thank you and I encourage you for continue recognizing the members of our sorority. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Good afternoon. Just state, just state your name for the record. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer A. Santiago Esquire. I am a proud member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. However, my presence here today is at the, as the president of the National Panhellenic Council for Southeastern Pennsylvania. Thank you. Our council currently serves all of the Philadelphia area, Montgomery County, Delaware County, and Bucks County. Our council represents all nine members of what has commonly been called the Divine Nine. We serve 23 chapters. We stand here proudly supporting Resolution 190192 because the recognition of one founder of any of our organizations is the recognition of all of our organizations. It is the recognition of all of the hard work and the service that all of our organizations are founded on. We may wear different letters, we may wear different colors, but all of our organization founded on service and scholarship by city council recognizing my triumphant founder, Arizona Cleaver Stemmons. You are saying to the city of Philadelphia, we thank you, Divine Nine. We thank you for the service that you proudly give to our city. We thank you for all that you do. So we thank you, City Council, for looking at us, looking at our most triumphant founder, Arizona Cleaver Stemmons, and saying to Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated that we thank you for not leaving South Philadelphia, for not leaving the 1900 block of Federal Street. We thank you for continuing to provide outstanding service that your founder put forth and designated as a principal founding, a founding formation we thank you for not going astray. We thank you for continuing on the path that was set forth almost 100 years ago. Again, standing before you as the president for the National Panhellenic Council, what I frequently tell our council is that we were not divine until we were all nine. The biblical meaning, the biblical meaning of the word nine is God's perfect love. And so we thank you, City Council, for allowing the Divine Nine to be God's perfect love to your constituents. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm Sonia M. Johnson, CPA, the immediate past president of Beta Delta Zeta Chapter, immediate past chairman and president of Girls Incorporated of Greater Philadelphia and Southern New Jersey, past board member of the National Organization of Girls Incorporated, a PA delegate for Vision 2020. A Philadelphia native, I've lived throughout the city, in Nicetown, West Philly, across the street from the Blackwell family home, actually, and I now reside in the 8th District of Philadelphia in Cindy Bass's area. I rise and represent Philadelphians. I rise and represent the many members of our organization, the hundreds in the city of Philadelphia, the tens of thousands around the world. And I rise on behalf of women and girls in support of the recognition of a woman in this city who has impacted 
the entire United States and beyond, and will become a symbol for all that we and you as a city council will recognize a woman in a meaningful way in the address of the 1900 block of Federal Street. So we thank you for supporting this resolution, Councilman Johnson, and we thank you for this obvious recognition of women during Women's History Month and as we observe Finer Womanhood Month. Thank you. Thank you, Pretty Tesma. Good afternoon. Afternoon. I am Diane Wilson, the 11th State Director for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. I am also a proud member of Beta Delta Zeta Chapter. I am a teacher by profession. So that caused me to research the reasons why streets are renamed and the controversies. I found one of the main controversies often centers around losing the identity of the street, even when the name of the street is tied to a person or an event. That led me to research how Federal Street was named. I discovered that it was because it was a road between two federal properties. The old Schuylkill Arsenal, which was located on Grays Ferry Avenue, and the original Philadelphia Navy Yard, which began in 1776 on Front Street and Federal Street. Now, many people use the renaming of a street as a way to honor someone. Change a street name and you change the way people think about the city. It's where ideology meets asphalt. Arizona Cleaver Stemmons ideology has resulted in a 99-year-old organization that continues to affect change, raise consciousness, and encourage high scholastic achievement. Just as her idea to found an organization transcended the boundaries of Howard University, we, the members of the Philadelphia Graduate Chapter of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, feel her legacy should transcend the boundaries of 1915 Federal Street. Thank you. Minal Rival. Commenting on 181063. Yeah. Hi, my name is Meenal Ravel. I'm a Philly resident. Well, wait a minute. That's from last week. How did that happen? I'm still a Philly resident, and I'm here today to speak on Bill Number 181063, authorizing PGW to enter into a public-private partnership with Liberty Energy Trust to develop the Passyunk Energy Center. You must know that gas is a fossil fuel, that adding to our dependency of fossil fuels at this late stage of a planetary climate fever is immoral and dangerous. Today, as I pass through security, I was stopped because I had a steel fork in my bag. We aren't talking about a pitchfork, but a dinner fork. Many of us, keenly aware of our city's litter problem and our oceans choking with plastic, have chosen to avoid using single-use plastics. Single-use plastics such as forks, water bottles, straws, and checkout bags. Because single-use plastics are made of fossil fuels, which we need to use so much less of. I want to thank Councilman Squilla for leading on reducing our city's usage of single-use plastic bags. So while my fork waits for me by the security team, I'm here asking, how can Council consider a steel fork dangerous and not consider a large fossil fuel project dangerous? So please, vote down Bill 181063 when it comes up for a vote. I'm also here to speak about Bill Number 181067, introduced December 6th of last year by Council Member Reynolds Brown. This bill calls for public hearings about executing the Mayor's Municipal Energy Master Plan, which calls for all of the city's municipal facilities to use 100% renewable energy by 2030. By the way, 12 municipalities in Greater Philadelphia have passed resolutions to transition their energy use to 100% renewable, community-wide, public and private. We can offer a presentation to any of you who want to learn more 
about the Ready for 100 Renewable Energy Campaign. Thank you. Nalida Sepulveda. Commenting on 190194. Good afternoon. Buenas Good afternoon. Tardes. My name is Nelly Sepulveda. I am a 51 year long resident of Philadelphia. Much of that time was spent in District 7, but for the last 20 years, the honor of living in District 9. Um, I am here to comment on Bill 190194, which authorizes a study on the impact of certain taxes. Um, I'm also here to um, ask that City Council continue to support the beverage tax as it directly benefits thousands of three and four year olds. We need to have more opportunities for children, not less. It is clear and the data supports that children in early learning opportunities do much better than those children that do not have those opportunities. It is the most important investment we can make to ensure that our children are growing up to be contributing members of society and leaders in our communities. I wish to thank my city council member, Sherelle Parker, for standing by the 2,200 children right now who are in Philly pre-K and for not co-sponsoring the bill to repeal or reduce the beverage tax. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Sheila Armstrong. <laughs> commenting on 180729. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm already a loud mouth. How y'all doing, everyone? My name is Sheila Armstrong. I'm here to speak about the Ortiz. What did I write that on the paper? Oh, it was the Ortiz 18029. All right, I lied. Okay. Um, my name is Sheila Armstrong, and I'm here today because I'm just here to serve uh, Councilman Clark. His papers for the hearing tomorrow. Okay. Since I'm 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 running against him, and I it's hard to try to track you down, sir. Okay, so here is me officially serving you. You're, uh, because I'm challenging you since you're challenging me. Tick for tick. Hi! You should have just left me alone. Here you go. So, uh, one of y'all poor people, can y'all get him? Oh, all right, thank you. That's all I needed. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. And also, any media people, I would like to talk to media people outside about the candidate intimidation that our councilman has been doing towards me and my campaign. So, if anybody would like community, ladies and gentlemen, and all this prosperity that is going on in this city has not hit my community. It has not been there in the past three years. We've been holding the title of the poorest urban city in the whole nation, and that is a disgrace to me, okay? Because all of y'all been here more than three years, more than five years, and some of y'all ten years. So how we don't have a plan to address poverty for my community? That's just wrong. Maybe because y'all didn't care so much. Maybe y'all didn't want to do so much or anything like that. I don't care. I'm not even here. The problem, the reason why I'm here, sir, is because I'm tired of the politics and game. All I want to do is run my race. I told everybody I wanted to run my race. Everybody you got called me, I told them I ain't want nothing. I was running my race that God purposed on my heart. I told you that when I met with you at Dunkin' Donuts. And I told you the other day when you and Greenlee, hey, Councilman Support your friend in that hearing tomorrow, too, okay? And also, all right, because this is just wrong, all right? I'm not scared. I always spoke up for what was right. I am a woman of faith and woman of God, and I do what he purposed on my heart. He told me to run this race, and that's what I'm going to do. I asked you to leave me alone. Just let me run the race because it's a message I had to give to the people. But you made it about you, sir. It was never about you. I told you it was never about you. It was about the people I serve in my low-income community that ain't getting the services. But y'all steady helping y'all friends do stuff. Thank I'm you. tired of this. Enough is enough. Thank you. Sorry. Joe Danahel. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is the official decree of the people in Rio Mandan Misquo Warto. As such, requires immediate action remedy. Every week, council, mayor, governor, and others transfer private property to the government, probably illegally. The U.S. Attorney General, Mick Swain, correctly identified the failure to perform a known duty or task is illegal and causes great harm. Military people know this action is treason. For over 90 times in this very room, I have decreed government officials to act and have suffered greatly from their failure to perform a known duty or task. Council chambers are usually occupied by the Philadelphia police. And in fact, the police commissioner has been in council recently. The state police, upon discussions, have ceded their authority to the armed Philadelphia police. The Philadelphia police have witnessed in their presence, in my case, over 90 times, a conspiracy to deny numerous God-given rights, including, among others unnamed, 42 PACS 8902, conduct which imperils my personal security or private property rights. It is therefore decreed to the police officers to perform their duty to arrest every council person and staff. The Constitution's require me a remedy of this breach of law, breach of clothes, breach of fiduciary duty. Your oath of office requires you to act or face prison. 42 U.S.C. 1982, 1983, 1985, 1986, 1987, 18 U.S.C. 241, 242, 2381, 2384, PA Constitution, Article 1, Sections 1 through 28, 26 PA, CSA, 703, 705, 708, 709, 711, 712, 713, 716, 902, and other walls listed in SCOTUS, 1589, 65, 141330, 144056 appear violated. I call on the federal and commonwealth governments to perform their constitutional obligations to investigate and prosecute all involved in the theft and illegal deed transfer of my home, 1038 West Wyoming Avenue. The denial of God-given 42 U.S.C. 1982 property rights for 25 years is egregious, extraordinary oath violating, and requires a media remedy. A just government must obey the rule of law. This color of law government must have its charter government revoked until a constitutionally compliant government is installed. Public servants cannot refuse a sworn duty to act any more than a fireman can refuse to fight fire. The sovereign people require oath, constitution, law, be enforced, and jail is required for oath, violate oath, constitution, or law. I remind council, it takes a lot of cooperation to create and allow this monumental corruption. Thank you for your testimony, sir. There are no other speakers in the public comment list, Mr. President. Thank you very much. That concludes our public comment session. And our next order of business is bills and resolutions on our final passage calendar. Mr. Decker, please read the title 190188. A resolution urging the United States Congress to reject President Trump's proposed budget cuts to the United States Department of Education. Chair, Chair recognizes Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Thank you, Mr. President, I move for the adoption. Thank you. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And resolution 190-188 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 190-189. A resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the model city's urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 2337 through 2345 West Burke Street. Chair recognize Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the adoption of the resolution. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 190189 is adopted. 
Mr. Decker, 190192. A resolution also naming Federal Street between 19th Street and 20th Street, Arizona C. Stemmons Way, in honor of Arizona Lidonia Cleaver Stemmons, the initializing founder of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, one of the largest organizations for women in the country. Chair recognizes Councilman Johnson. Council President, I proudly move for the adoption of the resolution. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it, 190-192. Congratulations. Mr. Decker, 190-194. A resolution authorizing City Council to hire and retain an independent third party to conduct research and produce a study on the fiscal and economic impact of certain taxes and fees, and authorizing the Committee on Appropriations to conduct hearings to consider such study. Chair recognize Councilwoman Gim. Thank you very much, Council President. In 2016, I was proud to be part of a legislative body that passed 13 to 4, a bold investment in children, communities, and neighborhoods that had too often been left behind. Pre-K, community schools, the rebuilding of our public spaces are bold investments in fragile institutions for whom there are far too few lobbies. When we passed this bill, we knew that we could no longer talk about the crisis of disinvestment and neglect in children or in our neighborhoods in terms of charitable, charitable ventures, hopes and possibilities, but we had to take big actions, major investments, because we know that combating poverty will never, will never be cheap. And uh, you know, this week, my, our, my own council member, Councilwoman Brondell Runnels Brown, held a hearing in which we talked about how the children of Philadelphia are poisoned in our city at rates that are higher than Flint, Michigan. We had to take a stand. Pre-K, community schools, rebuild, remain a legacy achievement for this council. But from the moment, from the moment uh, we even breathed this idea into possibility, we have been under relentless attack by the American Beverage Association, which has spent millions of dollars to divide us, and I know that they will spend millions more. They will not stop. It is their millions that put us in litigation for years and held up the expansion of pre-K to less than a fraction of what it should have been by this time. It was their millions that held up the, uh, the, the keeping down of the community schools initiative to half of what it should be by this time. And it was their millions that prevent or only now just allowed for the first ribbon cuttings to be allowed uh, for the rebuild programs. Now let me be clear because a lot of people wonder what's wrong with the study. We've had plenty of studies that examine the impacts of the beverage tax. We've had it from the National Bureau of Economics Research, Oxford Economics, the city controller put one out. Um, and in December, I supported, along with this council, Resolution 18116, calling for a study and hearings on the beverage tax. But how long are we going to allow this to continue? And how long are we going to allow this body to be used uh, for the narrow interests of one particular lobby. So I'm going to vote no against a duplicative resolution clearly drafted and peddled by the Beverage Association as a companion to a pre-K killing legislation. And I'm going to urge my colleagues to vote no because combined with a pre-K killing legislation, this is not an honest study. This resolution calls for an independent study, but it does not call for a neutral one. And I am not interested in facilitating the creation of a so-called independent study. I am interested in one that examines this tax from a neutral standpoint, that can see the positive benefits of this tax for years to come. Economists around the country are studying the benefits of pre-K and this tax. Let's wait and see what, and debate their work. Now, I am as good a government person, as, as good government a person as anyone in this city. I have fought for transparency and accountability for struggling institutions all my life. But I've done so from the belief and the, and the understanding that we have to bring a sense of purpose and investment to fragile institutions long neglected and underfunded. And I can tell you that I can see through a charade whose purpose is to drum up opposition that will only breed cynicism and distrust on a signature in initiative in this city. So that is why I'm voting no. Because I'm thinking of the families in our communities, the rebuild ribbon cuttings, our growing community schools, 
And I'm thinking about the families and the children whose uh, lives hang on the balance. And I'm not going to let them down. So I'm going to buy into this narrative and vote no. Thank you. Thank you. To recognize Councilwoman Parker. Thank you, um, Mr. President. And uh, thank you, uh, Councilwoman Gim, for uh, sharing your uh, very well-meaning and, and heartfelt comments. Um, I, too, am going to be voting no on this resolution. And uh, my rationale is less about the beverage industry because I respect my colleagues who were a no when we voted on this. I served for 10 years in a body that consisted of 203 members and I agreed to disagree with a lot of them on a lot of different issues. But this, what I call a thinly veiled attempt at demonstrating what W.E.B. Du Bois called the double consciousness, a double consciousness. I stand by my vote that was cast for the tax. And I do that unapologetically, and for those who were against it, you had a right to be. But this idea of now using this legislative format to put this issue on an agenda so that it can be used as a form of political weaponry against our colleagues who were for it is a little insulting to me. And I say it to you, Mr. President, because what I immediately thought about was the third party independent audit review study that we just conducted of the Office of Property Assessment. I thought about this, the independent third party study that we did of retirement security for private sector workers in the city of Philadelphia. And Mr. President, both of them were done without a resolution. Both of them were done, Mr. President, with all due respect by your power and authority as a, the leader of this body. And any of us who are interested in acquiring a third party independent study or audit of anything, we have the ability to garner up the support of our colleagues and we can go and get request one. And we do that with you. In addition to that, Councilwoman Gim already referenced the studies that had taken place already. I say to each of my colleagues who cast a vote, we will vote on many different things in this body and we will make some, we will make some tough choices. For those of us who have chosen, and some of us are coming under what appears to be an insurmountable amount of heat because you chose to take the tough vote. I say thank you for standing up and not allowing this issue because it's the timing for me, Mr. President. Now you see, if this were introduced, and you talked about the resolution that was passed some time ago, but if this was done, let's say this is, this is 19, 16, in the middle of 17, you know, I, I probably would have thought about it a little differently. But to, but to do it now, and not only do it when you're calling for a third party independent study audit review, but at the same time to introduce a bill that could in essence repeal it. So wait, are you telling me that you think you know what the results of the data is going to be before you get it? Because you introduce an instrument that could in essence repeal the tax? I say to residents in the 9th Councilmatic District, open up the phone, because I, I want to note this for the record. I want to specifically say to all of my pre-K providers, because you've been calling me since this was introduced. We have 16 centers in the 9th Councilmatic District. 359 of were the total slots that were allocated 347 were filled, and that's an average fill rate of 97%. I want to say to you, all of particularly the African American women small business owners who I fought very hard for during this process so that you could get backroom technical support to professionalize your home-based businesses that were supporting our community, I am not going to abandon you. 
I respect the right of my colleagues to be where they are going to be, but I do not have a double consciousness about my decision. In addition to that, I really, really want to affirm the timing that this was introduced at the same time of, uh, that the bill, and that is used as a form of political weaponry, and to my colleagues, and particularly the two who I know are feeling it the most right now, thank you for your consciousness. Thank you for your integrity. Thank you for your morality and standing for what you believe in. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Fiona Sanchez. Thank you, Council President. I'm going to give my colleagues the respect that they are unwilling to give to me. In allowing me to use the vote, the vote of confidence that my constituents, uh, when they vote for me, give me, to sit here and support and defend them. Ensure Similac and other products have been unintended consequences of what folks, and I have been adamantly against this from day one, because I spent 11 years in this council promoting and changing the trajectory of business tax reform in the city of Philadelphia. The BRT tax, use and occupancy tax, single sales factor. So I'm against regressive taxes across the board. Shame on us, and I consider myself a progressive, shame on us if we believe that funding good things only comes at the expense of poor people. I will not fall for that. The timing of this is appropriate because it is until recently that this has been declared lawful. And if it's going to be part of a portfolio of revenue, whether I'm for or against it, we should look at unintended consequences. I'm okay with people disagreeing on my strategy and my tactic. I do not take it personal. But please, please don't question my motivation. Please do not question when I sit here and defend the people in deep poverty in this district and question my commitment to public education. I have taken a whole lot of difficult votes here around public education and my support for young people. It's not an either or. So thank you very much, Council President. Thank you, Council. I ask all of my colleagues to continue to support a process we don't have to be comfortable with it. We don't always have to agree with it. But we ha do have to be respectful that we come here representing interest. And my interests are poor people in my community, store owners who are now being audited uh, against for, for this legislation. So I will stick to process that I got elected to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. <laughs> Chair recognizes Councilman Greenlee. Thank you, Mr. President. Just very quickly, I'll be voting for this resolution. I understand some of the concerns that were raised. Um, I think it is, in, in, in fairness, could be called duplicative of some other studies that are being done, but um, I, I don't think it's necessarily uh, should be a bad thing to, to ask for, for a study. I will say, though, that it should not be interpreted in any way uh, that some of the members that might be voting for this resolution are in any way favor of, of uh, undoing the soda tax. I want to say for the record, if the vote came up again, I vote the same way I did the last time. I think the soda tax was necessary. I understand some of the concerns about it, but um, again, and I would certainly not be uh, for a bill to uh, undo it at this point, but I think it is, um, we have asked for studies on a lot of things over time, and I think it's reasonable, although I understand the concern, uh, to ask for th this particular study. And I, I would be, with some hesitation, vote for this resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilman. Chair recognized Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Yes, Mr. President, I am uh, trying to uh, be as tight with my comments as possible. Uh, and so let me start where Councilman Bill Green Lee left off. If the vote came up again, <clears throat> I would be for the soda tax. The record should reflect, however, that when we had the discussions of the soda tax X number of months ago, it was my office that looked for alternatives. We looked at what other municipalities were doing, and we learned late that the container tax was a possible alternative 
but because my, my staff and I uh, did not do our homework uh, early enough, the, we could not secure the vote for the container tax. <clears throat> and the jury is still out on whether or not the container tax may have indeed achieved the same end with less onerous um, uh, outcomes or circumstances to small business. I have learned as a teacher that data matters, data, research matters, be it nine o'clock in the morning or midnight. And it's my understanding, yes, agreed that a number of studies were done before the initiative was implemented. Now we have data during the actual execution of that initiative, and that data should inform us on how and what we do going forward. And so I am for re a subsequent research that gives us information that we did not have but for the soda tax. Secondly, I actually took a tour of ShopRite with Jeff Brown, and I was disheartened to learn that seniors are being taxed with the insure, and parents who have children who take Similac are being taxed with the sugar and Similacs. So that is an unintended consequence. Yes, we should continue the soda tax, but there is value in looking to see how and if it is necessary for us to exempt some of those unintended consequences. So yes, research has value. I don't care what time it is on the clock. And the hope is that now that this important measure has been put in place and has given us, because I did ask for the data, on how our councilmatic districts are faring. Children are benefiting, parents are benefiting. It was a necessary action, not a comfortable one, but a necessary action. We took it, we need to stand by it. However, there's still value in getting subsequent information based on the new evidence that that uh, research will give us. So I'm for it now, I'm for it later, I'm always for data and research because we can never have too much information upon which we use to make responsible decisions. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman, no, you don't. You good? Never mind. All right. uh, Chair, recognize Councilwoman Bass. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things, and um, you know, I know that there's been um, a lot of conversation uh, in the last week about the bill and the resolution around soda tax. But I just wanted to address a couple of things. Um, the first is that just today, uh, Ernest Owens from Philadelphia Magazine came out with the, I, what I think is an excellent article around soda tax and the disparities and how we, you know, have this mixed message of saying that, you know, well, we want you to keep drinking soda and, and you know, have this unhealthy habit to pay for these programs. And at the same time, we want you to stop drinking soda because it's unhealthy and, uh, you know, we'll figure it out some other kind of way. It's a really strange, mixed message. And so I just really want to encourage folks to check that article out for themselves. And I really think it'll give a lot of people a whole different perspective on this argument in terms of who is actually paying the tax. And as I've said before, it's almost as if, uh, you know, for, for folks in poor communities, it's saying, okay, well, we're going to help you with your children. We're going to fix your children, but y'all going to pay for it. And so that's something that really needs to be looked at. Um, as far as the vote and the timing of the vote, um, I, you know, I do take exception with suggesting that the timing of the vote is an issue because it's election time. You are who you are who you are. You should have your conscience on at all times. I believe as a member of this body that how we would vote today should not differ if it was coming up on election day, if it was the day after election day. Where you are and where you stand should not be relevant as it relates to uh, a particular time of year or election season. And the one last thing I wanted to point out is that the, as far as I know, from my, speaking with my colleagues, everyone who has signed uh, onto the bill and the resolution have agreed that the programs are important. The programs should stay. 
how do we fund them is the question, and that is what uh, folks are going to be looking at. How do we make sure that we keep universal pre-K? How do we make sure that we keep rebuild and we keep our community school programs, uh, but at the same time find a better and more stable way to pay for them. So I just really wanted to be on record uh, with just a couple of things, and I look forward to voting for this resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. <clears throat> Chair recognize Councilman Dom. <clears throat> Thank you, Council President. Um, I think everyone on this council is in favor of pre-K and rebuild. I don't think that's the question. From my perspective, when I introduced the resolution back in December to look at this, I had a different theory on this, and I just wanted to take a look at it, and that is called the theory of elasticity, where because we're at, at some point, because there's been studies done, independent studies, three economists, I think Yale, University of Minnesota, University of Wisconsin, that showed that 42% of the beverage sales in Philadelphia were reduced. This is an independent study, not paid for by beverage or the administration, yet within zero to six miles of the county road, 42% of the sales were increased. And so my interest is knowing if we were to adjust the rate, could we still get the same revenue and should we study that? Because I'd rather have, if, we're gonna, if people are going over and driving to Bucks County or South Jersey or the main line, at least I'd rather have the business in our city, I'd rather have the jobs in our city, and I'd rather have the taxes in our city. So my question is, if we study this, could one of the questions be on the elasticity of the rate, we lower it to one and a quarter, one or 0.8, whatever it is, can we achieve the same revenue and not have people drive over the line? So thank you, and I hope that's part of the study. Thank you. Right. All right. Yeah, well, I'm not supposed to speak up here, so I won't. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, some limitations of being the council president. Uh, okay, so we have a motion. Did we do the motion yet? Yeah, need a motion. Uh, Councilwoman Keona Sanchez on 190194. Been moved and probably second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Yeah. Think it's think the ayes have it. Unless somebody is requesting a voice for it. All right. All right, ayes have it. Uh, 190194 is adopted for the purpose of getting an independent third party to conduct research and produce a study. Thank you. Mr. Decker, 190198. A resolution urging Governor Wolf to make appointments to the Pennsylvania Charter Appeal Board and calling for a moratorium on its proceedings until all board members are duly appointed and confirmed by the Pennsylvania Senate to serve in a four-year, in four-year, unexpired terms. Chair recognizes the Councilwoman again. Thank you, Council President. I move for the adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. And resolution 190-198 is adopted. Mr. Decker, 190, 199. A resolution approving the redevelopment contract of the Philadelphia Redevelopment Authority for the redevelopment and urban renewal of a portion of the Pennsport urban renewal area identified by house number and street address as 1218 South 2nd Street. Do you recognize Councilman Squilla? Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. 190, 199 is adopted. Mr. Decker. One nine, I'm sorry, one eight oh eight six four. An ordinance amending chapter seventeen fifteen hundred of the Philadelphia Code entitled Annual Disparity Study and Participation Goals by providing for further detail relating to, among other things, North American Industry Classification System Codes. Chair recognize Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for the adoption. Oh, I'm sorry. A bill? I got a little thrown off by the, the debate. Um, this bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is, shall the bill pass finally? Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass? Councilwoman Blackwell? Councilman Dom? Councilman Green? Councilman Greenlee? Aye. Councilwoman Gim? Aye. Councilman Heenan? Aye. Councilman Johnson? Councilman Jones. 
Councilman O'Neill. Councilman O. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. Councilwoman Gunnar Sanchez. Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Aye. Councilman Squilla. Aye. Councilman Toppenberger. Aye. Council President Clark. Aye. The ayes are 17 and nays are zero. Majority of members present. Voting in the affirmative. The bill passes. Mr. Decker, 190-062. An ordinance authorizing the Commissioner of Public Property on behalf of the City of Philadelphia to acquire fee simple title or a lesser real estate interest to all or a portion of a parcel or parcels of land together with the improvements thereon in and about the area bounded by Trenton Avenue, East Auburn Street, Tulip Street, and East Rush Street. This bill has been heard on two separate days. The question is shall the bill pass finally. Mr. Decker, call the roll. Councilwoman Bass. Aye. Councilwoman Blackwell. Aye. Councilman Dom. <coughs> Councilman Green. Aye. Councilman Greenlee. Aye. Councilwoman Gim. Aye. Councilman Heenan. Aye. Councilman Johnson. Aye. Councilman Jones. Aye. Councilman O'Neill. Aye. Councilman O. Aye. Councilwoman Parker. Aye. Councilwoman Gunnar Sanchez. Aye. Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Aye. Councilman Squilla. Aye. Councilman Taubenberger. Council President Clark. Aye, the ayes are 17 and nays are zero. Majority of members present. Voting in the affirmative, the bill passes. Mr. Decker, you have any additional resolutions? A resolution honoring Philadelphia's philanthropic women leaders in recognition of Women's History Month, introduced by Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Chair, recognize Councilwoman Reynolds Brown. Mr. President, I move for the adoption. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. And a resolution congratulating and honoring the Crispin cheerleading team on the occasion of their successful season, culminating in a win at the 2019 National Cheerleading Competition, introduced by Councilman Heenan. Chair, recognize Councilman Heenan. I move for the adoption of resolution. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing and honoring Phil Martelli for his many years of diligent service and success both on and off the basketball court during his tenure as head coach of the St. Joseph's University Hawks men's basketball team introduced by Councilman Jones. Chair, recognize Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. And a resolution congratulating and honoring Frederick L. Voigt for 50 years of dedicated service to the residents of Philadelphia on the occasion of his retirement from the office of the Philadelphia City Commissioners introduced by Councilman Jones. Chair again, recognize Councilman Jones. Again, Mr. President, I move for the adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. And a resolution recognizing March 25th through March 29th, 2019 as Immigrant Business Week in the City of Philadelphia, introduced by Councilwoman Quinones Sanchez. Chair recognize Councilwoman Quinones Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for its adoption. Second. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. And a resolution declaring March 31, 2019 as Trans Day of Vis Visibility in the City of Philadelphia, introduced by Councilwoman Gim. Chair, recognize Councilwoman Gim. Thank you very much, Council President. I move for its adoption. It's been moved and properly second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, ayes have it. Resolution is adopted. There are no other resolutions on the final passage calendar, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Are there any speeches on behalf of the minority? Chair, recognize Councilman O. Thank you very much, Council President. I just wanted to note that I uh, put a flyer on every council member's uh, desk uh, and thank them because we uh, are in Martial Arts Week. We had a kickoff, nice kickoff on Monday in the courtyard um, where we had uh, dem uh, demonstrations and uh, we had uh, matches and it was a lot of fun. Um, but uh, some of the schools are offering uh, open houses. Uh, the Juniper Muay Thai Gym on March 20th, the Philadelphia Aikido on March 20th and 24th, uh, Capoeira on March 21st and 23rd, Red Tiger Taekwondo March 22nd, Yawara Force Judo and Sambo March 22nd, Gracie Academy Jiu Jitsu March 23rd, and for any members, if you come at, at uh, 11 o'clock, I will be there to host you, so come on by. And um, Mainline Judo March 24th and uh, 31st. So everybody enjoy the week and uh, we hope to do a bigger and better one next year. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Speeches on behalf of the majority. Chair recognizes Councilwoman Councilwoman Parker. 
Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Data-driven and research-based information is always important, but the simple facts are too. And just for the benefit of any seniors from the 9th Councilmatic District who may be watching us today, I want you to note for the record that the insure that Dorothy Parker, my grandmother, used to drink when, and many of you drink, and I'll see you all at the West Oak Lane Senior Citizen Center in a few minutes, it is not taxed. But you do know that the very specific milkshakes that some doctors prescribe, that is what is referenced. So again, the cans of Insure, Councilman Johnson, that my, I used to go to Pickwell for, for, to get for my grandmother, they are not taxed because facts matter too. In addition to that, to the pre-K providers and all of the mothers who are, who are listening to this debate, I want to note for the record that baby formula is specifically exempted. If you go anywhere and they are taxing your, your Similac or your Infamil, they are doing it against this law because this law specifically exempts baby formula. And I just thought that it was important while we want to ensure that we have a data-driven and research-based process and um, the last study and the elasticity of the tax councilman Dom, I, I think getting that data is, is going to be good. Uh, for We went through it for the cigarette tax, so I'm, I'm well aware of that, that kind of process. But I, the misinformation that is often distributed and then I have, to, I have to go out and talk to my constituency day and we'll have to undo when a senior citizen says to me, I know you did it in 16, and, and I know what you said, the reason was, and, or why you did it, Sherelle, but I didn't know that my regular insurer was being taxed. That's wrong. In addition to that, this baby formula is specifically exempted. And I, I want to just note for, again, the record, I will never ever um, a, a question what is on the inside of, of my colleagues and what drives us. But there is nothing that anyone can tell me to, to make me believe otherwise that the timing of this legislation being proper, and I'm referencing both the bill along with the resolution, that the timing is so that it will significantly impact those people, particularly in council districts, who have opponents that are being funded from the industry and if somebody wants me to think otherwise you're gonna have a, a whole lot of convincing to do I know that all's fair in love war and politics nobody gets that better than me I don't lost a whole lot so I know what that feels like but when you're gonna tell the truth about why you do what you do say it and if I wanted it council president I, I, I probably would have gone to you sir to say the process that we use to get the independent third-party audit that we just did that I think was very helpful, Mr. President, of our Office of Property Assessment, I would have probably said, can we use that process? But everyone takes the strategy and you use the vehicle, and we do have a right to that. And I, I respect the right that we have to move legislatively, but don't, don't like, you know, tell me it's, it's, it's not raining and I'm feeling in what I feel with the timing of this. And some of us are feeling it more than others. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, Chair, can I ask Councilman Heenan? Thank you, Council President. Uh, sounds like a whole lot of uh, profits over people conversation going on in this room, and I don't think that's what you know we represent and who we are as a body and as a legislator in, in the constituent service. And it also sounds like if if people are selling products and illegally taxing them. Sounds like a class action suit to me, and I hope that this city pursues in that in that venue if that is the case, because people profits will never supersede people in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, that being said, uh, talking about people, uh, I had the pleasure of joining Coaches for Cancer again, as I do uh, almost on an annual basis uh, with the Building Trades and Local 98, and as one of the sponsors and. You know, we honor, we had a resolution here honoring Phil Martelli from our colleague, um, Councilman Jones, uh, in, in his departure in, in tenure, 24-year tenure at, at St. Joe's. And we have Fran Dunphy, who is, who is at Temple. So we, we're losing uh, two, I think, uh, very uh, well-respected on and off of the court in their 
way they communicate and engage with the communities, engage with uh, local boys and girls clubs and, and, and charity events. Uh, and so the Big Five is losing uh, two icons here in the city of Philadelphia. The Big Five also is ranked number one in the nation for raising funds for coaches for cancer. Number one, by far. Nobody can uh, ever touch them in their philanthropic and their endeavors in, in, in the fight for cancer. So I want to commend them in their, in their efforts of doing that because it isn't all about basketball. Uh, a lot of times uh, we get caught up in, in the hype and the, in the wins and the losses, uh, but you know they're winning every single day. And speaking of big five and wins, we do have Nova Nation all right, they're on at seven o'clock tonight. They're the only uh, number. They're only uh, one left in the, in the Big Five that's that's going to be playing. So they're going to be on at ten o'clock, and hopefully Nova uh, will continue on in in the tournament. I think you know we had a, a great parade. Uh, so I have shirts uh, for Nova Nation in celebration of our Big Five and encouraging uh, Villanova in its uh, in its fight to the to the next round. So thank you for your time. Go thank Nova. You. Thank you, Councilman. Uh, Chair, recognize Councilwoman Reynolds-Brown. Yes, I just want to offer a friendly reminder to my colleagues and staff to please join us uh, next door as we lift up and celebrate the Zetas and the new street that is being uh, uh, celebrated in Councilman Kenyatta Johnson's district. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman, while you had a mic, can you please call for an adjournment? Sure. <laughs> uh, I move that Council stand adjourned until Thursday, March 28th, 28th. 2019 at 10 a.m. Move a second. Council stand adjourned until Thursday, March 20, 2019 at 10 a.m. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed, ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you all very much. <laughs>